So, okay, and welcome to the next installment of Why I Am an Old Fart. Now, I ran out of time yesterday, I mean, in the previous rant. I was going to rant about films as well, but I just completely ran out of time. So, that's where I'm going to start the rant today. About today's modern films, and then I'm going to rant about video games and other things. So, the deal with modern films is, it's all violence and doom and gloom these days. Now, back in the good old days, films were different. We had things like the original Star Wars trilogy, The Goonies, Home Alone, Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, um, the Carry On films. I could carry on and on here. So there was that. And so many wholesome, family-friendly films that you and your family could watch. But what do we have now, though? It's all dark and serious and violence and doom and gloom. Even kids' films that feature comic book heroes. Even those films are like that now. It's like there's no standards anymore. And as for the sound in modern films, it just makes them unwatchable. Now, when I say sound, I'm talking about the sound levels. Because back in the old days, when they made films, they kept the sound levels pretty consistent, like I do in my videos. But with modern films, one minute you can barely hear what anybody's saying. The next thing you know, you've got ruptured eardrums and ringing that doesn't go away for weeks. Things were better back in the good old days, with only a few stinkers here and there. These days, it's the other way around. I mean, yes, there's, you know, a few gems out there, but you're going to have to dig pretty deep to find them. So now I'm going to rant about modern video games. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I love video games. I just don't like all the modern shooters, you know, all this Grand Theft Auto this and Call of Duty that. I mean, even my drinks are advertising this crap. I mean, look at this. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's in there somewhere. I don't like that crap. Um, games I'm talking about, not the drink. Okay, so I'm going to address one elephant in the room here. And that is what people associate with the word game. Now, these days, when anybody mentions the word game, it's always some first-person shooter they picture. Because, apparently, the word game is another word for first-person shooter. Now, that's not what I associate with the word game. This is what I associate with the word game. my mission. those. That's what I associate with the word game. That's what games mean to me. Not just random shooty guy shoots other random shooty guys. They, don't, they all look the same. I, I wouldn't know the difference between Call of Duty and Crisis. And I'll tell you another thing. Pug-Z is a side-scrolling Sega Genesis game, not a random shooter. And there, 
turned off my display capture. Because, again, I forgot that it was on. Like the idiot that I am. And, of course, I cannot talk about modern games without talking about the crap they put in them. You know, mandatory paid DLC updates and microtransactions. You know how it is. Yeah, I'm so good at this game. I'm almost halfway through. I'm almost halfway through. Yes, I've done. What? Oh, what's this? I gotta pay and download the rest of my game. Fuck! If I buy a game, I expect to have the whole game. I expect to have the whole game available. I don't expect part of it to be locked behind a paywall. I'm looking at you, EA. What still is on this DLC? You know, it's right there. It's right there on your disc. It's on the disc. It's on your hard drive. Yet, you have to pay to unlock it, even though you have it right there. And microtransactions, who the hell came up with that? Back in the good old days, when you progressed through a game, you'd get rewarded with items and things you needed, and that's how you got them. These days, if you need something, Especially if it's an item, an essential item that you need in order to progress through the game. You gotta pay for it. With real money. I recall one um, thing I read where this kid basically bankrupted his family's bank account. Because he'd been playing this game on his parents' computer and spent all their money on game items. He didn't know. He thought it was some kind of virtual currency that the game had. See how dangerous it can be? Speaking of which, I have nothing against games having their own built-in virtual currency. You know, that you earn as you progress through the game and then you can use that to buy items and junk. Just so long as it's in no way connected to your actual bank account. Just think, if nobody had come up with the idea of connecting your game to some online service in order to play it, there wouldn't be any microtransactions. The world of video games would be a much better place, like it used to be. These days, we've got all this amazing graphical processing power, you know, power that, you know, would make even last year's technology look obsolete. And video game creators could use this to create fantastic looking games that take place in a world completely detached from our own with things that you've only seen in your wildest dreams, but no. They'd rather just throw all creativity out the window, poop out another Call of Duty, and then use all that graphics processing power to polish a turd. And another thing, updates. Let's say you want to casually play a game for a few minutes, so you load up your game, but no, there's a new update patch available. It's got to update. That means more than anything else. And by the time the update's finished, you've got no time left to play your game. Games these days always have to update because they weren't fully tested before they were released. So they released all these bug fixes and update patches back in the old days. Games were much more thoroughly tested before they were released. And what bugs they did have, they weren't even worth fixing. I remember when you didn't have to connect your game to some online service in order to play it. I remember when you bought a game, you bought the whole game. I remember when video games didn't have to update. I remember when multiplayer meant two or more controllers connected to the same console, and you both played in the same room, on the same TV. I remember when video games didn't have so many bugs. And most importantly, I remember when you didn't have to pay to play unless you were playing in an arcade, which was perfectly fine. And while we're on the subject of software, downloading things is different to how it used to be. These days, you've got to be so careful. Let's say you go to a website to download a certain piece of software you need. There are so many false links, and I have been fooled by this so many times. I click on the big download button to download the thing I want, thinking that's the download link for the software I want. I look in my downloads folder afterwards, and I think, Eh? What? This isn't what I downloaded. So if I get any of those, I just delete them right away. Now, I found that if I install an ad blocker, Somehow it gets rid of those, so that's not really a problem for me anymore, but I know it is for some people. It wasn't like that many years ago. 
Back then, if you went to a website to download a certain piece of software, those were the only links you saw. You didn't get loads of false links all over the place. The only links you'd see were the download links for the thing that you actually wanted. Nothing else. And installing software is not the same as it used to be. Unless you're careful. These days, when you download and install something, unless you decline from all the offers, you'll get a ton of crap installed that you didn't want. And some of these offers, you cannot even opt out of. They'll just install right away without even letting you know about it. You know, they'll just be installing themselves in the background without even the slightest notification that they're actually doing that. That's usually stuff like fake antiviruses and registry cleaners that don't even do anything even if you paid them. Yeah, so if you find something like blah 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 pro, that's usually a sign that it's something fake. These are things that get installed alongside with what you actually wanted. They're usually scams. And some of them. Change your homepage. Change your search engine. Install toolbars. Sometimes even replace your browser entirely. I should know, it's happened to me. Even if you had everything set up just the way you want. Nope. They want you to use their search engine, their websites, their web browser. F off. I have one piece of software that I use quite regularly. And it, this has one of those nasty installers that installs a bunch of crap if you're not careful. But because this is an offline installer, well, the main part of it, which installs the actual software that you want, because that is offline, when I install this program, I can just unplug the internet, install my software, and then plug it back in when it's done. And that's fine. That way it cannot go and download and install all the crap that I don't want. But it's not always the way. With some of these, you have to be online. Because the installer doesn't even contain the program that you're trying to install. So, if you're trying to get something for a computer that doesn't even have internet access, you know, say you download the program, you know, put it onto a, like a USB flash drive, and you stick that in the other computer that doesn't have internet access, well, you can forget that. Although sometimes, you know, older software is just better, even if it's not available to download anymore. But I was smart. I put that stuff onto a USB drive. So, even though it's not available to download anymore, I still have it. I still have a copy of it, which I can install at any time. And this is why offline installers are better, because you can do that. And in the past, all installers were offline. There was none of this online stuff. Everything was installed offline. That was the way it was done back then. And that was the better way to do it. And why? Because you can save a copy of what you downloaded. You didn't need to go online or have an installer go online and download something that might not even be there anymore. I wish Linux was like that in that way. Because on Linux you download something and, you know, you get something from, say, the repository or use the terminal or whatever. You cannot save what you downloaded. So that's one of the things that keeps me away from Linux, because if some of that software ever becomes unavailable and I need to reinstall Linux and reinstall those apps and they're not there anymore, yeah, I'm pretty much screwed. But with going to the website, you know, in Windows, going to the website, downloading your software, making sure it's an offline installer, it's just a better way of doing it. I don't know why they add all this extra junk in software anyway. If I released something, well, I just wouldn't put in all these offers in the installer. I would just have it install my software, you know, the software that it's actually supposed to install, and that would be it. There wouldn't be any of this extra crap. They just make it more complicated than it really needs to be. I might as well rip on modern internet while I'm here. So... Visit any web page, any web page at all, and unless you have an ad blocker, you will notice that it's absolutely infested with ads. These advertisers just don't want you to have, browse your internet in peace. I'm sure the website owners know about this, know that these advertisers are 
put ads all over their site. And if I made a website, I would make sure that no advertisers get in and stick their ads all over the place. I'll make my own decisions on what to buy. I want some ad choosing for me. So yeah, we have ad blockers now. But they don't block everything. Like those annoying pop-ups. They come up, they darken the screen and take up about like 90% of it and if that's not enough, they'll attempt to annoy you with another annoying thing. I think they're called captures, where you take a thing which says, I'm not a robot. And the next thing that comes up is either something with some really crooked squiggly text with scribble all over it and you're trying to read it and put it in but you know fives look like s's ones look like l's o's look like zeros and uh, you can't even tell the difference between a lowercase l or an uppercase i they look the same so how are you supposed to know 90 percent of the time i get it wrong because I just simply cannot read. If they put it, like, printed it in a legible way, that would solve all their problems, but they don't. I'm sure these people who came up with this idea are absolutely insane. So it's either that, or you'll get a picture of something with a grid over it and it says, select all the squares with bikes or traffic lights or signs or whatever. The thing is, though, these pictures are not all that clear. And there might be a square that has maybe two pixels of a bike or a street sign or whatever on it. And, you know, of course, you can miss that. A lot of the times when I do these things, you know, I, I settle them maybe 70% of the time. I get it wrong. I mean, are the poles that street signs on, does that also qualify as part of the street sign? You don't know. They don't tell you. I mean, why do I have to do this? It's so stupid. And sometimes these captures don't even work. I remember I needed to download something and it wasn't available anymore, but there was a copy of it on the Wayback Machine, so I went there and tried to download it, and there was a capture to download it, and the stupid thing wouldn't even show up, so I couldn't download the thing I wanted. Fortunately, I scrounged around through all my old discs and I did actually find a copy of it that I downloaded um, several years ago, but yeah. I remember when the internet was free of all this stupidity. You could just go on, browse the internet, download things you wanted. There was no mess, no fuss, no captures, no pop-ups. I remember how the internet used to be. There was no ads, or pop-ups, or anything like that. It's nothing like it is now. I don't know why my voice is going like this. I hate when my voice does that. But finally, while we're on the subject of internet, everything has to be done online now. My mother was very poorly a few weeks ago, and she needed to get a sick note from the doctor, and it had to be done online. That was the only way to do it. And do you think we could figure out how to get this thing to work, how to get this sick note? When in the past, all you needed to do was phone your doctor up, say, yeah, you know, I need a sick note because I'm not very well, blah, 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 blah. These people, okay, fine, I'll send one around for you, and yeah. But that's, that's not the case now. And there was this other time when our washing machine broke and we needed to get a replacement. That had to be done online. First time we tried it, it wouldn't even work. Second time we tried it, it went through there and we got the replacement machine. But the thing is, when you do these things, even if it's just something you're gonna do just the one time, you've gotta register. And then of course you gotta wait for an email or a text with a confirmation code. God, it's such a mess. Well, I think we're about out of time now, but join me in the next rant when I talk about modern cars and modern trends and a bunch of other modern stuff that pisses me off. And until next time, goodbye.